Welcome to my series on thermodynamics and statistical mechanics. This video is going to be an introduction to some of the most fundamental ideas and definitions in thermodynamics. The most simple and intuitive concept is that of temperature, but it's also a bit tricky to exactly define when you start out in thermodynamics without defining a few other things first. But I'm sure you all know that temperature is the quantity that's measured with a thermometer. But how does that exactly work? Well, say you're cooking a steak at 57.2 degrees Celsius or 135 Fahrenheit for a medium rare steak, which is the only proper way to eat a steak, by the way. Now, suppose you stick a thermometer in that steak to measure the temperature, mostly because you don't want to be an idiot who uses the palm of their hand to assess the steak's doneness. Anyway, so you put your thermometer in your steak. The thermometer starts out reading room temp, but eventually as time goes on, the thermometer itself reaches a temperature of 57.2 Celsius and stabilizes. You read this temperature off the thermometer scale and that's how you find the temperature of your steak. But what's happened here? Well, you put the thermometer in contact with the steak, and after a long enough time, the thermometer and steak reach something called thermal equilibrium. So when two objects are in contact for a long enough time, they reach something called thermal equilibrium. The time that this takes to occur is called the relaxation time, which depends on the objects in contact and how they're put in contact. And that leads to another way of thinking about temperature. Temperature is the quantity that is the same for two objects that have reached thermal equilibrium with each other. So in the case of our medium rare steak, the way we're able to measure its temperature with the thermometer is that we allow the thermometer to come in contact with the steak and after a certain amount of time, the relaxation time, the thermometer and steak reach a thermal equilibrium. And so the temperature being read on the thermometer is the same as the temperature of the steak. So that might clarify things a little regarding what temperature temperature means, but now we've opened up another rabbit hole. What do we mean when we say contact? What does allowing objects to come into contact actually mean? Well, it means that we allow those objects to exchange energy in the form of what's called heat. And to prevent this exchange of energy between two objects, you need to insulate those objects from each other. Granted, you can never really have 100% perfect insulation. Insulation really just prolongs your relaxation time, but it won't outright prevent an exchange of energy. So let's go back to our steak scenario. Suppose we add a cold stick of butter to the pan while we're cooking the steak to help with basting it. What happens is that the stick of butter rises in temperature and melts, and the steak cools a bit as a result of coming in contact with the butter. By convention, we say that the steak gave up thermal energy or heat to the butter, and the butter absorbed thermal energy or heat from the steak. The object that gives up the thermal energy is said to be at a higher temperature, and the object that absorbs the thermal energy is said to be at a lower temperature. So that covers some of the basic introductory definitions in thermodynamics. Let's talk about temperature scales and how we arrive at them. 57.2 Celsius, 135 Fahrenheit, what do they even mean? We'll start with the Celsius scale. The way you arrive at that is you take a thermometer at one atmospheric pressure, like a mercury thermometer, which is based on the expansion of mercury in a column with a fixed cross-sectional area, and you put that thermometer in water at its freezing point. You mark the length of the column of mercury at this freezing point temperature and designate it as zero degrees Celsius. Then you put that same thermometer in water at its boiling point. You then mark the length of the mercury column at this temperature and call that 100 degrees Celsius. Then you divide the 0 and 100 marks by 100 equally spaced increments with each increment representing 1 degree on the Celsius scale. Of course, recall that the freezing point of water is the temperature at which water is in equilibrium between its liquid form and its ice form, meaning that the rate at which ice melts equals the rate at which the water freezes. You have something similar for the boiling point of water also. It's an equilibrium between liquid water and water vapor. Let's now move to the Fahrenheit scale. It's a very similar idea as the Celsius scale, except now you designate the freezing point of water as 32 degrees Fahrenheit, and the boiling point of water as 212 degrees Fahrenheit on your thermometer. You then make 180 equally spaced increments between these two points and arrive at your Fahrenheit scale. Now, for our third and probably most important temperature scale, the Kelvin scale, you can use a different type of thermometer such as a gas thermometer. This time, instead of using the length of something like mercury to measure your temperatures, you measure your temperatures according to the volume your gas takes up in the gas thermometer. So you do the same thing to calibrate your gas thermometer. Measure the volume of your gas at the freezing point of water, then at the boiling point of water. 
You can then plot your volumes on a graph against temperature and draw this line, which gives you a relationship between the volume of your gas thermometer and the actual temperature. If you take this line and you extrapolate it all the way to some theoretical temperature where the volume of the gas is zero, you get a temperature known as absolute zero, which comes out to something like minus 273.15 degrees Celsius. And this is how you start your Kelvin temperature scale. The Kelvin temperature scale starts at absolute zero and goes up in the same increments as the Celsius scale. So a Kelvin is the same size as a degree Celsius, but the Kelvin temperature scale starts at absolute zero as opposed to the Celsius scale, which starts at the freezing point of water. You can also have an absolute temperature scale that has the same increments, the same size as the Fahrenheit scale, but starts at absolute zero. That's called the Rankine scale, but only a clown would ever seriously use Rankine temperatures in a thermodynamics and statmet course, so just ignore that after this. Anyway, that should do it for this video. I'd like to thank the following patrons for their support, and if you enjoyed this lesson, feel free to like and subscribe. This is the Faculty of Khan signing out.